Ramp cards are taking it in the butt. Counter cards are taking it in the butt. But if we combine ramp with counter, will they still be taking it in the butt? That's what we're going to find out with today's deck here, centered around the new card Growth Spiral. Growth Spiral is unique because it's both a ramp card and an enabler of instant speed counter cards. And it's actually the first card in Magic that's blue that can put a land into play at instant speed. And that's important because, say, we have two lands open. We pass back to our opponent. The opponent expects us to have a reman so they don't play anything. And instead of us wasting that two mana, we can instead Growth Spiral. All the while outpacing our opponents on lands. But now let's take a step back and look at this deck. First of all, we have ways of making two mana by turn one. We have two gemstone caverns as well as Chancellor of the Tangle. That allows us to potentially go with multiple Search for Tomorrows or an Ancestral Vision or even a Chalice turn one, which is pretty good. And we could also go with Growth Spiral. Growth Spiral turn one is very cool because you have two lands out by turn one. But the idea of this deck is that after turn one, where we play all these sorcery speed cards, the deck then transforms into an instant speed deck. And if you notice, pretty much everything in this deck is instant speed. We have the four remands, the four Growth Spiral. Four Cryptic Commands, two Vendillion Clicks, one Snapcaster, and four of these. It's basically through the Reach, but we don't have to sacrifice the creature. And that means with five mana at instant speed, we can throw in any of these big boys here. So one option would be to throw in Chancellor, which we are mostly using because it makes one green mana at the start of our first turn. But a 6-7 with Vigilance and Reach is also very good, especially at instant speed. But we also have World Spine Worm. When it dies, you make three 5-5 five, five Worm Tokens. It is vulnerable to Path to Exile, but Chalice of the Void does protect it. So that's the good news. And then we have one Elder Scale Worm. It's a pretty unique card that's very strange. Basically, it prevents damage from dropping our life below 7. But if our opponent has something that says target opponent loses life, then its ability turns off. Other than that, our life locks in at 7, and as long as we have the worm, we're basically not going to lose. If all goes well, the deck works very, very well, especially against slower decks where our counter cards can have a big impact. But here's the dilemma. Ramp decks are almost non-existent in the metagame, aside from some Amulet Titan decks and Scapeshift decks. And while Jeskai control decks and Azorius control decks make up a combined total of 5% of the metagame, they lean heavily toward creature removal rather than counter. But long story short, Short, both ramp and counter decks are not having a great time in this metagame. And just by looking at this deck here, it worries me because the curve is so spread out and that's not really something that we see nowadays. Even reaching five mana, it, it's tough. But this deck is unusual enough where even though my gut says it's not going to work, I think it's still worth a try. Because how will Chalice turn one affect it? How will Gross Spiral affect it? With Gross Spiral and Search for Tomorrow, we could fire this turn three. And being able to throw down a World Spine Worm on turn three, that seems pretty good. But like I said, the metagame, I mean, we have like art like Phoenix decks dealing 10 damage on turn one. With this deck, it certainly won't be easy. But I still think it's worth finding out. So, last thing to mention here, we have one Sphinx of Foresight. It's a new card with Scry 3 at the beginning of our first turn. The idea is to help with things like Chalice on turn 1 if we're on the draw. And because we're ramping hard, getting the four lands and playing it isn't all that difficult. For lands, we have four Flooded Groves and three Treetop Villages. They can block and they can help push our opponent's life to under 15 for World Spine Worm. But now on the sideboard. Not surprisingly, I am worried about aggro decks, which is why we have a total of six life gain cards, four of these Baylos, which when we play it, we gain four life, and two Thrag Tusk, which gains us five life. And the other concern is graveyard decks. They are very, very fast. And because we're in blue green, we don't have the best options for graveyard removal. And graveyard removal that costs one is not really an option for us because we have chalice. So I think the next best thing is to go with the bog. We can instant speed it in with growth spiral and it exiles their graveyard. And then in case we go up against Tron or big control decks, we have disdainful strokes, two of them, which counters a card with converted mana cost four or more. And against heavy non-creature decks, we have two negates. And against artifact decks, we have two creeping corrosion, which destroys all artifacts. And that's the deck. Hopefully this list here that I came up with is at least somewhat viable, even though the metagame right now has me very worried about this deck. But let's get to that gameplay so we can find out. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And now, here's the gameplay. Opening hand is very nice. Big boy Chancellor will allow for this and this on turn one, so let's do that. Uh, boom, boom, and pass back. Ooh, it looks like it's another ramp deck. Probably Amulet Titan. Let's see who can ramp the hardest. We pull World Spine. Okay, that's pretty good with that. We'll just play this, pass back. Ancient Stirrings. Okay, then back to us. And back on our turn, not bad. We can search for tomorrow this turn. The next turn go that. Yeah, I like that. So back to our opponent. Another ancient stirring. It's in the growth chamber. They might have something big here or not. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. When would the best time to fire this be? Probably the end of the next turn. I mean, there should be one pact negation floating around, but we'll probably be okay. Want to put that in the place? Sure. So they play the Titan and they shall swing in. Come on, give it a double strike. Hmm. They haven't given it a double strike yet, but let's go. Dramatic entrance. No pact negation. Good, good. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. You have big boy, but our big boy bigger. Let the better lady big boys commence. The Titan goes to Jesus, and now it's all over. Do this. I'm trying to think if there's anything to be worried about. We can go with this again. There are so many options here. We could even attack with treetop. But I think the safest move here is just swing for 15, and then pass back. Valeria West, sure. Summer's pack, of course, and Primeval Titan. Well, I guess the game plan will just be to go. Dramatic entrance, Chancellor. Soak up most of the damage. Opponent swings, and then we'll do the same thing as before. Dramatic entrance, please no counter. Oh, and they just concede. Didn't they want to see the Chancellor? Whatever, we would have gotten it next turn with that. Because 15 
15 trample is pretty hard to deal with so it's on the game too going on the game too it's a tough call on what to drop out but i want the disdainful strokes or the big boy in chalice it's good to have chalice because they have cards that cause zero like pack negation and summoner's pack and if you can get it on one it stops vigor but other than that the mana curve is really spread out so chalice is just all right not great though but with that let's go to game two opening hand is certainly interesting we can go turn one turn one and grow spiral yeah i like that and the scry three is certainly nice when it goes ancient stirring grabbing the amulet and if we can scry into chalice that'd be pretty cool but probably not because only have two yeah that nasty bottom all three so we shall go grow spiral and land cool let's just go this and then pass back to so courage tribe scout amulet and back to us we have reman grow spiral and i'll just pass back probably remand another amulet okay engineered explosive will be certainly nice here but too bad we don't have it i almost put it in the sideboard a lot of mana uh summoner's pack yep grabs titan but we have not only reman but also disdainful stroke well disdainful stroke that puts them in an awkward position because next turn they're going to need double green they'll probably be able to do it with this though and cool oh you know what wait a minute Ten thousand iq play here <laughs> they need to double green at their upkeep but guess what bounce this big boy and they finally realized what we were doing because without that hoe they can't instant speed at the upkeep put in another land untap it make double green so it's pretty good luck that on the first match we go up against like the only other ramp deck in the format right now or pretty much the only other ramp deck in the format right now and it's nice to see that we did well against it but how well we'll do against other decks that's what we have to find out so on to the next match opening hand we have a turn one chalice with gemstone and we also have this so yes we will keep this and we shall exile snapcaster Ooh, that's a good sign okay we go with chalice and pass back what? okay another dramatic entrance i suppose we'll plan on vendillion should we vendillion on their turn in case they have blood moon yeah i think so now that they've drawn a card let's see what they got uh oh two bridges and a blood moon oh boy this is not good even the rabble master is pretty good against us if they put the bridge out afterward we could bounce one of the bridges but two of them and i don't think we can come back from a blood moon either this ain't so good i yeah for now i think we just gotta take the blood moon dang it, it ain't looking good wait what oh they pulled another one no okay well let's uh swing for a three back to them rabble master we go to 16 i mean we can't do anything with our lands ah we can hold the block but then he's gonna swing in with the tokens but if we don't block they'll swing in for six next turn to pass back i mean ah oh, man super unlucky turn one chalice but against the one red deck where it's not good i think at this point we're getting fondled from too many directions and i don't really want them to know what our deck is so let's go to game two unfortunately so go on the game two and dump the chalices and one gemstone to put in two negates two creeping corrosions four and snaring bridge and also one thrag testing with that let's go to game two not a great hand a lot of late game stuff so we're gonna mull and it could be better but we do have sphinx to scry three so we'll keep a little early for that we do have the worm though okay fine on top and opponent goes gemstone so bottom of chancellor and i suppose top top and then back to opponent and it looks like no blood moon this turn to so play that pass back what shall they do war boss remand that okay drag test cool we have any gate we can play but other than that we can't play anything so pass back war boss can't do anything Opponent swings in for one passes back yeah encrypted but ah uh, crap it's an awkward position pass back they swing in with the team he's gotta let it happen so we go to 14 and they play chandra well that is definitely worth countering you gotta get some lands here okay that's fine doing so like cryptic tap down their stuff or something like that and he plays simeon sure but i assume they're just testing the waters yep that'll be a counter and a tap or do we just let it happen so we can draw a card to try and hit five it's tempting to tap and draw but i think we gotta counter this counter and tap one thing we'll get through though that's not too bad we'll be at 12. <sighs> no land that is a really bad draw we play the sphinx to block we just do this for next turn we taking nine though one bolt away and there's that this is not good i guess we just go sphinx maybe he won't be as eager to attack with that there but still i don't like tapping out like that not that we have anything to play but sometimes just having the lands on tap can scare them away yeah they're swinging in okay we'll block that what is this and chalice on three yeah that, that is fine at least we scry one bottom of that's not a land okay well this is this is this is the game ah, it's so awkward we were so close just going straight into that but like it, it just didn't happen and that's kind of the problem with ramp is like you know you delay and you get into late game but just throwing down creatures that push damage in early or relatively early in their case is sometimes just better than a really late late game plan oh well so on to the next one opening hand too many lands so we're gonna mull and no turn one chalice but we can turn two chalice so this we shall keep and opponent goes faithless looting and two blood gas this will probably be tough let's go chalice and pass back so it looks like it's dread which means we might be in trouble we'll go search for tomorrow and pass back on it swings in and tries and plays golgari thug okay remand get an island cool we also have a vendillion click well 
pass back. My opponent then swings for four. We go to 10 and tries Golgari Thug again. Well, instead of countering it, let's go bounce and draw. Growth Spiral and Treetop Village. Well, we're still hanging in, kind of. We'll pass back. My opponent then swings in for four. We take four. Golgari Thug, yeah. And then end of turn, might as well go Growth Spiral. Cryptic, nice. And Vendillion click on ourselves. Getting rid of Chalice, but another land. Well, I suppose we swing in for three. My opponent goes to 15. Back to them. And then our opponent's turn. Let's go Cryptic Command, tapping down their stuff. Dramatic Entrance, nice. There's a chance we could turn this around, but it's not very likely. And they can flog a law. Arvindillion, sure. We really need to hit a big boy this turn. That's not a big boy. And shoot. With Conflogala, they can finish us off. Well, it looks like they got us. So we're going to game two. So going to game two. I'm going to dump all the slow stuff. And the two chalices we're going to keep, though, for faithless looting and stuff. But then put in all this graveyard stuff or the, the bog for graveyard stuff and life gain stuff for, you know, because they, they fast. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, we can grow spiral turn one into this. That's pretty good. We'll keep. Ba boom, 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 and pass back. I hate this looting. Stinkwood and Amalgam. That's pretty good. So we'll be able to dredge five next turn. So I suppose the best move here. See if we can hit a bog. No, but a chalice. Okay. Four lands, pass back. Four lands is pretty good, but with so many graveyard decks, I don't even know if it's good anymore. And oh look, three creeping chills. So another land, six mana by turn three. So it went two lands, four lands, and six lands. I don't know. It, it's just too much. It's just too much. I don't know. I just feel so helpless, you know? Not that long ago, a ramp deck like this had a chance, but everything's just so fast these days. I don't want to be the voice of doom, but you know, kind of true. We only played three matches, but I think these three matches say it all. For both ramp decks and counter decks, the metagame is not very friendly. We had really good results against Titan Shift, but not very good results against Mono Red and Dredge. And the way I see it, Titan Shift represents old decks because Titan Shift isn't very fast, its key cards come at sorcery speed, and its curve is very spread out. And decks like that used to be very common, but nowadays the speed of the metagame has been cranked all the way up, and now it seems both counter decks and ramp decks are both being outclassed. Because if we look at our matchup against Titan Shift, our counter spells worked very, very well. And as long as we kept our mana open for counter spells in our opponent's turn, we were pretty much guaranteed to win. Now compare that to the Dredge matchup, where counter spells meant nothing, even Chalice really meant nothing, because Dredge is just too fast for counter spells, and with stuff going to the graveyard, countering something with like Cryptic doesn't really get rid of it. And I thought with this deck here, maybe Chalice being able to do Chalice turn one could level the playing field a bit, because our curve is very spread out. Even with Chalice, I just don't think it's enough for this deck to work consistently. I mean, when this deck starts with the right cards and has all the right pieces really early, yeah, it can be very good, but it can't do it that consistently. And mulligans in particular were very painful because with 24 lands plus the chancellors, there were a lot of games where we had too many lands and so we had to mold, but then there's times where we mold into no land. And unfortunately, even with a card like Growth Spiral, which is pretty insane if you think about it, it's like turn one if we have two mana, we can already have two lands out and just keep slamming lands, all the while keeping our mana open for things like Remand. And a few years back when counter was more relevant than it is today, I think Growth Spiral would have been really, really good. But the problem is if our nut hand is getting four lands out by turn two, it sounds impressive, but when you think about it, having four lands alone by turn two isn't enough. We have to back it up with something and we can't do that consistently. Now compare that to something like an Arclight Phoenix deck, which when they have a nut hand is 10 damage turn one. So I think as long as the metagame stays as fast as it is and as powerful as it is, I just don't see counter cards and ramp cards being that relevant. And it's unfortunate because the cards are pretty cool. I mean, I love being able to counter things because it adds a level of interaction that separates magic from other card game and not being able to do counter stuff takes away some of the dimension of magic but whether or not the metagame stays this way only time will tell maybe something will get banned maybe ramp cards and counter cards become more powerful but we'll have to wait and see and with that we wrap up this video don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this and as always i hope you have a great day